So I bought some of this stuff for a uh, video shoot this week and um, I might just test it out in the background here. Okay, let's just cut straight to the chase. If you're a filmmaker, you need at least one of these in your audio kit. It doesn't matter what kind of films you do, just stop the excuses. You need to get yourself a Zoom F3. What's up, everybody? My name is Ross Barnett, and over the last seven years, I've had the pleasure of running Two Fly Guys Media, a videography business that simply started as a hobby, and now it has turned into a full-time income for a multitude of people. It's been an incredible journey, and this channel is taking all that I've learned and know and teaching it to you guys. So if you'd like to see more, stick around with that subscribe button. We're on a mission to reach 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year, and this morning, I woke up to 200 subscribers. So that's pretty awesome, and we're already 20% of the way there. The haste does look kind of cool. Holy moly. Whoa. So like most reviews on this channel, I'm going to take more of a practical approach to how I use this product rather than the actual in-depth review. I wanna talk about how I've used the Zoom F3 over the years and what I love and what I don't love about how it works with my workflow. Because although it is perfect, there's still a few things that I wish I could see changed in future generations of the product. Up first, let's talk about my history with Zoom. My very first audio recorder was this guy, the Zoom H1N. And it's super similar to most audio recorders. It has a 3.5 millimeter line in and a 3.5 millimeter line out and it even has built-in stereo microphones. Typically, I would use this recorder very similarly to how I use the Zoom F3 today. Because this 3.5 millimeter jack supports both mic inputs and line inputs, I could pair this to a mic with a lavalier and mic it to my talent. And with the right cables, I could also pair this recorder to a soundboard to get audio directly out of that soundboard at an event. It was really my do-it-all recorder when I first started my videography business, and I still use it from time to time today as well. But there's one thing that the Zoom F3 does far too well that just made me jump the gun and get a Zoom F3 in early 2022. And that is 32-bit float audio. See, with the H1N, you really had two options. It has a button here called Auto Level, which helps a lot with balancing out correct levels, but it wasn't always perfect. If things got too quiet, the recorder would amp up all the levels searching for a sound to capture. And when things got too loud again, the first half second of that loud audio would almost always clip in your recording. The second option would be to set the levels manually with this little dial here. And if you got this right, you were in business. And if you got the level wrong, well, let's just say it wasn't going to be great in the editing room. All in all, the Zoom H1N was a do-it-all recorder because of the 3.5 millimeter line in as well as the mic input. And the main reason I loved it so much is because you can plug a lav mic into it, but also use it for a soundboard or speaker audio out as well. It was really just a great value for the $99 price tag. All right, now let's get straight to the point, the Zoom F3. Let's just go ahead and divide it up into two main categories, why I love it and what I'd like to see different in future generations. Up first, let's talk about why I love it and why I can't go without it. Everybody knows good audio is just part of good video. It's just the basics of video production. And especially when it comes to live events, capturing that audio on the fly isn't always the easiest thing to do when running small teams. Typically, I work in teams of two videographers where we're both capturing video and kind of both running audio. We don't really have an audio guy. And the Zoom F3 with its built-in 32-bit float makes that so incredibly easy to do. To put it simply, this device is so simple to use. There are no fancy menus or crazy color screens on this device. Looking at you, Tascam. This is a turn it on and press record kind of device and that's just what I love about it. Just plug it into your sources, line out with the proper cables and click record and you can set your levels or not. You can always find the audio perfectly in post. So yes, the ease of use is such a big plus. But ding up next, I want to talk to you about the ways you can use two XLR inputs on this device. With the right cables and knowledge, you can get audio from anything. I typically keep three cables in my kit, an XLR to XLR, an XLR to quarter inch, and an XLR to 3.5 millimeter adapter in case I ever need to run it into a 3.5 millimeter microphone. And that's about it. I would say that 80% of the time I'm using this recorder as a line in to record vocals out of a microphone on stage. For this, you really just need the right cables and you set your input to the line in and you're all set. Another way I use the Zoom F3 is for applications like this video right here. I have a Rode shotgun mic mounted onto a C-stand here just out of frame. 
and the 3.5 millimeter cable ran into an XLR adapter and then run directly into XLR of line one sitting here right on my desk. However, because this is a mic that requires phantom power, you just have to change a quick setting in the input to allow phantom power. This is a fantastic and easy way to get clean audio for any talking to camera style videos or any simple interviews. Having both mic and line inputs both be able to offer phantom power makes this recorder very useful. Another function of why I love this product is the USB-C port that supports full power delivery. When filming interviews or anything where you know you'll need the recorder running for a long time, you can simply plug it into a wall outlet or any V-mount battery with USB to power this recorder pretty much indefinitely. This is such a clutch feature for a device that's powered by AA batteries. And knowing that you don't always have to trust those batteries to last the entirety of your shoot is such a great feature. Just plug that thing in USB-C and let it ride. The micro SD card is another feature that I absolutely love. And maybe this isn't so much about the Zoom F3 itself, but it's something that I've grown to love. See, I keep a 256 gigabyte micro SD in all of our Zoom F3 recorders. Why? Especially when the average audio file is under a gigabyte? Well, that's just 100% for backup, just in case anything ever happens or if any audio files don't get transferred correctly. I've owned a Zoom F3 for almost two years now, and I can confidently say I've never formatted an SD card. Having all those files just be able to stay on the card is incredible. So yeah, support for large micro SD cards is a huge benefit. Up next, let's talk about the downsides and the things that I wish to see improved on future generations. The first one has to be these play pause buttons on the side. I haven't met anyone who will record audio into a recorder and then immediately say, hey, let me listen to that track and scroll through the menu to find the audio just recorded to click the play button and listen back. It seems like it would be needed, but I've never met anyone who does that. So I don't really have a problem with the function of the buttons. I'd rather just see this space used for something else to save space or just getting rid of them altogether. I've never clicked the play, pause, or stop button, and I think they're just useless to me. Up next, I would love to see a 3.5 millimeter input port on this recorder. I know I can always use adapter and there's not much room as it is, but I'd love if one of these XLR ports could be some sort of combo port to include a full-size XLR plus a 3.5 millimeter jack. It's asking a lot, but for cases like this where I'm powering a shotgun mic with the F3, it could be very, very useful to just have a 3.5 millimeter input right there. And last but not least, I don't use the additional Bluetooth adapter and I don't really know why you would. So I guess thank you for not including it and making it an extra, but it could be some space saving in future generations to just bypass the Bluetooth dongle altogether. So there you have it, folks. That is my practical use case and kind of long-term review on the Zoom F3. It's changed so much about my workflow and changed so much about my confidence in getting clear audio when working on small sets. If you're a videographer looking for a fantastic recorder to help capture audio for live events, or simple interviews, this recorder is definitely by far the best of the best. I couldn't imagine capturing decent audio at a wedding without the Zoom F3, and I can't wait to see what the future generations of this product look like. And again, we're on a mission here to hit the 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year. It's a crazy, crazy lofty goal, but I think that we can do it. I'd love to have you join along while I share all that I know about videography as a business and how to take your videography to the next level. I'll see you on the next one. See ya.